you want to be prepared for the day that the, the instrument doesn't work. So what I like to do is if I'm going to make this photograph of Carol, and I'm sitting here, and the meter's sitting there, and I know from, from doing this for years that it's going to be around, uh, say, 20 candles per square foot. So in my mind, I pick up the camera, and I set 1 20th of a second, and I'm going to use Triax film at f20. And I say, well, I'd like a little more shutter speed than that, so I'll go to f16 at a 40th, f11, you know, at a 125th. And I get all ready for everything. And at the last minute, I just kind of double check with the meter. And I might make a slight adjustment just, just to see where I am on the thing. But uh, and some of the rest of you, <coughs> when you're photographing horses or when Dale is photographing homeless people in San Francisco, uh, you don't have all day to take a meter reading. You know? And sometimes the picture goes away while you're trying to jerk around and figure out what to do. So I really encourage you to start learning how to read light. And the only way to do it is to say, well, what's that grass reading over there? And you make it a little note of it in the, up here, and you remember it. You get to the point, I know many photographers, well, the Westons, you know, they didn't have meters. Mm -hmm. Edward Weston didn't have a meter, even though there's one named after him, supposedly. Brett Weston scoffed at him. Cole Weston carried one for looks, <laughs> but uh, I don't think he used it very much. Uh, and you think, well, how did they make these great photographs then? Mm -hmm. They made it from, from just rote memory. And you can do the same thing. It's very comforting to know that. I was in Yosemite one time, and there was a National Geographic photographer, and we were on one of the streams, and I walked by him and we were talking, and he had a, a fitted case, and it was solid Nikons. I don't know how many were in there, but there were a lot of them, mm -hmm. more than one, which to me is a lot. Yeah. <clears throat> and as I walked away after uh, talking, uh, it dawned on me that I'd looked at his camera. Uh, it was a nice sunny day, and it was, the camera was set at f2 at a 30th of a second. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I got a uh, 100 yards away, and I thought, I wonder what he knows that I don't know, you know. And so I went back and I asked him, I said, Tell me how you figured your exposure. He said, well, I just turned the meter on, and it says F2 at a, at a blah, blah, blah. Oh, wow. Well, his meter was dead. Oh. He was absolutely dead. He had no idea yeah. about where the, the, the exposure might be. And he, he, if you buy a roll of film, it used to be anyway, mm -hmm. uh, on the box, it would say on a bright, sunny day, yeah. you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. this is where you work. Well, you start re you start putting that thing together, and when you get into things like the zone system, and it's just mm -hmm. one approach. It's not the approach. It's just mm -hmm. one approach. It's just a way of fine tuning. And people like Ansel Adams were not satisfied with a generic or general purpose photograph. They wanted it to be. Ansel always was very very demanding of his pictures. He wanted things to be just so, and so he developed the system with Fred Archer to, to do that. Well, how do we get to that point? Even in digital photography, this is where uh, you, you could give some thought. I remember when Larry was lying down on the back of the floor uh, doing the ceiling of the, uh, the chapel in there, and then later sometime I, I saw those photographs on his, on his uh, monitor or screen or whatever you call it on the camera and they were all different, you know. And so, well, how do you know where to place those? And that's what the zone system is about. And so if you use something like a gray card and hold it up and make a comparison between the gray card and the ceiling, which was a very dark ceiling, you know where it should be. Yeah. Then the next step is, am I willing to <clears throat> accept it where it should be? And frequently, that's not the case. That was the case with Ansel, and I use him a lot because you can all in your mind probably close your eyes and picture Moonrise Hernandez or, or our favorite in this area. And, 
and we call it Moonrise Gonzales. Gonzales. Because right. <laughs> Ted Orlin made a great photograph of Gonzales, <coughs> California, here with the big water tank up in the front, and they turned the water tank into a moon. But you can picture that, and all of Ansel's photographs, almost all of them, none of them are literal. The first time I went to Yosemite, I got out of the car and I looked around and I thought, where's the Yosemite I've seen all these years in Ansel Adams' photographs? And I realized he didn't show you the, the, the valley as it was. He showed you the, the valley as he wanted you to see it, the way that he saw it. And he very severely altered values. And it worked. worked obviously worked very well.